Are you ready? Oh yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome into the Gaming Hub. This is episode number 122. I'm your host, Tyler, saying thank you so much for joining us this week. And I'm joined by our two co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. Graham, how are you doing and what did you play this week? Uh, well, I am doing great. Uh, the weather, like, got a bit of a tease. The weather was nice and cool last weekend, kind of enjoyed that. And now it's just intense hotness. So yeah. with that, I've been hiding inside, kind of hiding. Um, to play some games, and those games have been Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I uh, paid for the Croft Edition to play it a little bit early just because I was so excited for it, and I just wanted to get into it. I didn't get into it as deep as I planned to just because I played NHL 19, obviously. Uh, that's a staple. It's always been my life playing NHL. So, yeah. But, man, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I know you haven't played it yet, Tyler, and you're looking mm-hmm. forward to it. Mm-hmm. This game is, first of all, it's it's a beautiful game. Uh, it seems like it's going to be on a little bit of short side, but uh, we'll definitely get deeper into this. Uh, I think me and you were going to kind of do a, re- a review episode talking about yep. it. Next weekend. Yep, next weekend. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting through that. And like I said, I've been playing NHL 19, punching in a lot of time on HUT. Uh, have, we haven't played much EA, EA, uh, EASHL. A little bit of tongue twister. <laughs> <Attaboy>. <laughs> Got it out there. But, uh, yeah, three of us have played that. I'm sure each of us will talk about it a little bit. But I am quite yeah. enjoying it and uh, definitely hoping people who are listening will want to join our uh, ESHL team. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah, if you're out there and you like the NHL series and you have Xbox One, that's what we play on, um, and you like playing ESHL and you're looking for a club, hey, send us a message and join our Discord. Uh, we'll get through how to do that in a few minutes. But, um, before we get into all that, I want to go to Steven uh, and ask you how you're doing and uh, what you played. You finished the game, and I know you want to make a little bit of uh, Adana, you want to change your opinion a little bit on um, a game that we did a review episode for. Uh, that is correct. So yeah. uh, don't don't ever say again that I never finished anything because I finished Spider Man and I finished it on I think I finished it Monday night, um, and yeah that. That was a very quick turnaround. And I put a decent amount of hours into it, too. Probably 25 to 30. Um, unfortunately, PlayStation's UI doesn't have a way to track game pl- time played like PC and um, Xbox and kind of the Switch does. Yeah, I was just going to um, say, don't forget the Switch. <laughs> they, they don't, well, they don't do it as accurately as the other two, yeah. Graham. So I get, get my shot in there. Um, and the game... So PlayStation relies on the games to make the decision, and I don't necessarily like that. And I'd like to have known how long it took to beat uh, Spider-Man, and there's no game time in um, in in game for Spider-Man. The, but I beat it. Yeah. Go uh, I got probably eighty-eight. I think eighty-eight percent of the the way done. Um, no. I might go back and do the other challenges and side missions and stuff, but. Uh, right now, I kind of wanted to move on to, to playing Dragon Quest Eleven, which I also picked up. Um, but I haven't been because I have been playing a lot of Madden 19 still. Um, and to the point where I started, like, understanding how the system in Ultimate Team actually works. And so those of you that listened to our review episode know I, th- I think I gave it an 8. And Tyler gave it an 8.5. But I'm, I'm amending my review and I'm also adding 0.5 points. Because... Um, uh, last night I finished the team diamond set. For those that have, so those that have played, you you collect like all the the important players on on a team, and you turn them in, and you get like a ninety overall player. And so I finished the charger set, and I got a ninety overall Melvin Gordon. And then I went and sold him for like two hundred and fifty thousand coins. And I picked up. Well, I started with picking up Xavier Rhodes, but I ended up selling him. And finishing off, like, one of the other new sets that just came into the game, like, two, three weeks ago, the Ultimate Kickoff set. And so I ended up um, selling a few more players and finishing that set off to get four 90s and a 92, which I sold for 400,000 coins. And so I've been getting into the, like, the the buying and and selling and market along with completing sets and stuff. And I just have 
having a blast and I actually spent a little more money. Not an insane amount. Yeah. I, I'm not at Tyler's level or some of these other, like, hardcore addicts. But I just – I've been enjoying it. And I at least – here, like, those of you that listen knew I kind of hit them hard for the amount of, like, microtransactions or spending money. But at least they give you, like, a reason to. And there's mm-hmm. there's stuff to work for uh, towards, and it's kind of fun. Whereas, like, in NHL, there's not a lot of cool sets that you can, like, cool themed sets or stuff that are available. And I, yeah. and that's why yeah. I... Yeah. So would you would you agree that because we talked about it on the review episode and and you were kind of pushing back at me about Ultimate Team, but now that you've played it more, and like you said, you kind of start getting how the ecosystem works and the market and all that stuff. Um, would you agree that there are a lot more ways this year to earn really good players without spending anything? Yes. And um, I agree, and I think that's really good for the game, and I think it's good for because in the past. They had things in place that were designed to get you to spend money. Yes. Like contracts, contracts and stuff like that. Yep. And uh, that's no longer the case in the game. Like, you can still spend money if you want to. It is still sort of pay to win, or at least pay to be better on paper. But a good player with, like a good Madden player with, you know, an 83 overall team is going to beat a crappy one with an 89 overall team nine times out of ten. Mm-hmm. I feel that way with uh, Ultimate Team 2 with NHL because mm-hmm. uh, I've picked up a few really good players and I haven't spent any money in it yet. So, like, I feel like I've accomplished more this year than I did for a large part of last year's edition. So yeah. maybe that's something they're kind of, like, leaning towards now. They're like, okay, we got to stop trying to milk these people for all this kind of money and try to give back to them. Mm-hmm. And... I don't know. I just I like the mode. I, I've I've had a really good time with it. Madden's my favorite. Graham, you know. I mean, I um I just finished writing the review for NHL 19 for the Xbox Hub.com. By the way, we are the official podcast of that site. So head on over there for all the latest in your Xbox gaming news. And they also have the Switch Hub.com for the latest in Nintendo Switch news. Uh, I just finished writing the Xbox or the NHL 19 review. That's going to be up probably in the next day or two. And I'll be honest. Like spoiler alert, Graham. I was hard on Ultimate Team. You know that, though, because you and I have talked about it. Yes, we and have. So, but we're going to go to NHL in a second. Okay, I don't want us to be like wall-to-wall sports to start the show. So, yeah. in between, real quick, and Steven, you and I are going to do a review episode on Spider-Man tomorrow. But we've both finished the game now. At least, like, the main story. So, what are your, like, what are your initial thoughts on the story? I, For me, personally, I feel like it's one of the very best superhero games I've ever played. And it's just immensely fun. Yes. Um, I, I mean, there, there really hasn't been any good ones besides the Batman games. Um, in fact, I, besides the Batman games, like the only other one I can remember was I, I had like the Fantastic Four game on the on PlayStation 2, I think, or the or the GameCube. And I was actually like playing this was back when I was like a little kid and and didn't have money for games. So I played every game I had, even if they weren't very good for long periods of time. And I remember um, my little like nephew deleted my save file and I was pissed because, because I put, you know, 10 hours into the game at that point or 10, 15 hours in and it got deleted and that sucked. Uh, but sorry, that's a, that's a different route. We'll take it, but <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Yes. It is one of the best superhero games. Um, the combat's more fun than Batman for, for sure. In my opinion. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's arguably story wise, it could compete with some some of the the Marvel movies, um, not all of them. But if you want full thoughts, you know, listen to our yeah. review episode. Yeah, we'll have that review episode up. It'll be a timed patron exclusive for about a week or so, and then we'll release it out as an episode for everybody after that. And but yeah, we're excited to talk about that tomorrow. And um, but now I, I just want to touch briefly on NHL. I don't want to get into like a you know, huge discussion. So if you're waiting for us to get passports, just real quick, and then we'll move on. I promise. Graham, it's one of your favorites. Um, it's one of your favorite games every year. Yes. Uh, so tell me your initial thoughts on it. Like, what are what are you seeing? What modes have you played? What modes have you played the most of? And or what are you enjoying the most? Okay, I would say the mode I've played most is Ultimate Team. Uh, oh. So I've played a few full games like online seasons where you got to play three and they rate your team or rate 
you as a player. Um, I didn't rate that well. I won one out of my three. Uh, I'm actually running to people with really good teams already. I, I don't know if people have spent the money or they put time into it, but I feel like I part, partially lost these games myself, so there is a, a balance there. Uh, other than that, I've played... I played uh, one online versus just to see like how it was compared to the beta and holy tripping like uh, <laughs> I think they adjusted the tripping in most modes compared to the beta because that was a big issue people had but online versus I don't know if, I think it was my first game like I got a ton of tripping penalties and now as I've played so many games I've learned to not like not hammer on that uh, poke check button but I face other people who still have a tendency to do that. So it, it does drag out the game, which is unfortunate. But I know mm -hmm. as I rank up and go into higher levels and I'll face like more opponents that have put in more time that these games will end up shorter. But it does get frustrating like it because you just want to go through so many games possible and like work your way through it. But when these games end up like twice as long just because these like tripping penalties it is kind of frustrating yeah so i'm guessing that's something they might fix but mm -hmm. like a good thing that came out of this is now i don't spam it and <laughs> it causes me to actually check more often mm -hmm. and like previous games i didn't check that much like my checking was always a lot lower than my opponent but now i feel like now i'm the dominating one in checking so so I, I don't hate on it entirely. It just, I feel like it makes me a better player. Yeah, it's different. And I like that. So there's a lot of gameplay changes this year that I feel have made a positive impact on the game. Mm -hmm. The skating has been really overhauled for the game. And yeah. you can feel it when you're playing. The uh, puck pickup mechanics are better. Still not yep. perfect, but better. Yep. The AI for the CPU control players especially in EASHL, is dramatically improved. Dramatically, yeah. And okay. especially from like two years ago to now, it's it's super noticeable. Yeah. So what I will say real fast, and then we'll get Steven's thoughts, is the world of Chell mode that they put in this year with the, the program and the NHL ones and stuff like that, that is a lot of fun. I had a really good time with it. I was not expecting to. I thought, you know, I'm just going to play this because I'm writing the review and you know i hope it's okay i actually had a blast with it it's a lot of fun and it's a completely it's very arcadey it's it's almost like an, t an entirely different game built into nhl 19. so that's really fun steven uh you got to play a little bit in the trial um what are your thoughts on it i mean it feels like just a more polished version of last year's game i really only played EAS eashl and i probably will <laughs> only play only uh chell yeah, yes, I tell. Um, and I mean, I don't really have much much to say on the other stuff because I have touched them and I, I won't. Um, I just strictly play SHL and leave you guys to talk about yeah. the other modes. Um, but what yeah. I played of it was was fun. Um, I just wish uh, our right wing wasn't so terrible at the game, but you know, <laughs> nothing you can do about that. It's a good well, thing I'm defense. Yeah, <laughs> better be um, switching. But, Steven, you and I were talking in offline the other night, and we were both kind of like, you know, we're kind of surprised that we kind of had fun playing. Because we had gotten to the point with, like, 18, where we just were like, nope, we're done. Can't do it anymore. And it, we both put it away. So, it, to, to go back into 19 and actually walk away having fun and saying, you know, I enjoy playing, I kind of want to play again, that's pretty cool. So, Yeah, except now that I've been getting into Madden, I don't want to play yeah. in the NHL because I have men. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Sometimes, still, I hear, yeah. sometimes I hear you guys talking about Madden, and I'm like, I don't know, that sounds like it could be kind of fun, even though I don't know anything about football, but where you guys have these little challenges about you have two attempts to like, get a touchdown. Like, I kind of wish they could incorporate some of that stuff in NHL, but it, it's tough. But I, I thought one year they had these little challenges where – you'd start at this certain period and you had like to mimic mm -hmm. like some greats like like mm -hmm. for one like Meryl yeah. New you had to score on your first shot of your first shift of like your first NHL game. That might have happened. I don't know. But you know what else you could do, Graham, if you had Madden? <laughs> What's that? 
you could take part in our franchise league, our connected yes. franchise, and we offer that to our community. We do still have spots open in it, and we kind of follow, we mirror the NFL schedule, we update every Monday night. So you're not expected to pay, play like three games a week or anything like that. It's pretty relaxed, and and uh, we do have openings, though. So if you play Madden on Xbox One and you want to take part in that, go over to Facebook at the Gaming Hub Forums and join there. There's a sign-up form there. Um, if you go to Twitch, uh, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch, hit follow there. Uh, from either Facebook or uh, Twitch, you can get a link to our Discord. And in Discord, we have a dedicated Madden channel that uh, has the sign-up form for the franchise in. It's where we kind of go to set up the games that need to be played and all that type of stuff and just talk about the league in general. A lot of fun. We've had a really good time so far. Uh, we're in week two right now. Well, some of us are. Steven hasn't played his week two game yet. <laughs> That's a bold faced lie. <laughs> he did play it. I you know, I didn't see it, but I was talking to him in party chat while he was playing it and it didn't record in the thing, so he has to do it again. But but I can verify he did win the first time. So he'll uh, he'll play it again and we'll get it in there. But uh it, it's always fun when you have user games against each other. Steven, you you and I play each other next week, so that'll be fun. Uh, and, stream it. Uh, <clears throat> yep. We will. So, but yeah, if you want to take part in that, uh, please uh, head on over to either Facebook or Discord. There's a uh, sign-up form there. You just have to send it in, and we'll get you set up in the league. So, Yeah, I just want to add one thing about Mm -hmm. NHL. Yeah, they really did miss the ball with not having online, like, it seems like when I hear about Madden, all these features, they have, like, online and stuff, like, friends and stuff like that. Like, NHL is lacking in that department. Like another good example is draft champions, because we we went to go do it last year on NHL 18, and I realized you can't do it with a friend. So I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. they'll bring that in NHL 19, and that was one of the first things nope. I went to look for, because like some people in the community they're like, oh, well, let's do a draft champions and like just see how that goes. It's like, nope, you can't do that. Can't do it. So and no franchise mode. Yeah. So I I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that NHL 20 or 2020, whatever they're gonna call it. Is going to have it. Yeah, hope so. Hopefully but they're listening. The, the, only, the only sports games left that have connected franchise of any sort are Madden and um, NBA. NBA 2K. Yep, oh. NBA 2K. That's it. So uh, they've kind of gotten rid of it one by one. And those are the two that I think are going to keep it, especially Madden. It's just made for that. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens going forward. But uh, one last way you can take part in the community, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, You can look up the Gaming Hub Podcast on YouTube, uh, hit subscribe there, and uh, we're going to try to get more content out and more regularly as we go. All right, so those are all the ways you can join the community. If you want to help support the community, you like the show, and you want to help support us, there's a couple ways to do that too. So Twitch, we talked about, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. And we'd love it if you use it on us. But if you choose not to, then use it on somebody. Give somebody that free sub to kind of help them grow and uh, get better and sort of achieve the goals that they have. The other way is Patreon. We have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming hub. And you can, for as little as $2 a month, get uh, timed exclusive content and sometimes exclusive content that we record. And for as little as $5 a month, you're entered in for a full... $60 $60 game giveaway, and by the way, the one for um, September we're going to do at the end of the show. So uh, we'll be doing one a month, though, and if you're in the $5 or higher level, you are entered to win a full $60 game every single month. And I do want to spend a, or send a special thank you to Devin and Willard for uh, helping support us on Patreon this past week. Uh, thank you, guys. Appreciate it more than you know. So um, really appreciate the support there for from everyone who's done so either on Patreon or twitch all right guys anything else before we jump into news no let's do this let's go so there was a nintendo direct this week yes there was there was and we watched it and you know actually a lot of really good stuff came out of it but the first thing i want to talk about because we're going to get sort of the the downer out of the way right away except for graham probably (laughs) there is no downer yes there was there is i am steven i am completely underwhelmed with nintendo switch online yeah uh am i wrong here am i am i being too hard on them no no you are not (laughs) okay so what do you think 
Uh, <laughs> where to begin? Can can Graham go first and just defend this so I can just you know? How can I defend it if, I, if, if, single... if, if there's nothing been attacked? Uh, yeah, but there is. I want you to defend everything they did, and then I'll attack. I'll tell you why you're wrong. No, I'll go first. Okay. Online play. All right, that's that's fine. Um, every like I think. For a while, Xbox and PlayStation, you had to pay to play online. I don't know if that's the case anymore. I still think it is. Um, it Honestly, I've never not had PS Plus or Xbox Live Gold, so I really can't <laughs> say off the top of my head. Um, but I, I feel like you do need to pay for it. Yeah, so you do. That's okay. You need, you need and, gold to play yeah. multiplayer. Yep. Okay, so you get some NES games. I guess that's pretty cool. Um, it It's a lot like games with gold except you only get nes games instead of you know newer titles or playstation plus i'm just i'm just going to talk about xbox but it's all comparative save data um i know playstation gives you like uh i think xbox is free even if you even if you don't have gold playstation you have to have ps plus but it keeps your like cloud saves for like three to six months or something like that if your service laps um and i'm going to come back to that in a second uh smartphone app really stupid why is that how i need to voice chat with friends i I need to now have my smartphone with me um i i would hope i could also like use my ipad um and connect to the like internet that way or even like my pc if i have a laptop or something um it it would really suck if i have to use my smartphone not not a huge fan of that that's really dumb and special offers uh, who knows what that could be? Probably sales. Same like Xbox Live Gold sales or the Flash sales on PlayStation. Um, but let's go back to save data. Because, w- first of all, not every game in the Nintendo Switch library has save data to begin with. Uh, Splatoon 2 is one of them. But it's not even the biggest one. Uh, I think Dark Souls doesn't have cloud cloud uh, saves. That's ridiculous. And if your service lapses... Your your uh, cloud saves get deleted immediately, um, and that is just ridiculous. There, there's a lot of underwhelming stuff. I mean, it's only twenty bucks a year, so I guess comparatively speaking, twenty to sixty for the other two. Uh, twenty isn't bad um, to play online if you're really into online gaming. And Smash with Smash coming out, it's like kind of the reason they launched it right now, along with Mario Party and tennis aces just having been released but i i don't know i i'm not impressed with this this doesn't impress me it's like it's it's like what they shouldn't be this far behind in the in the online services uh world like but behind the xbox and the the playstation like even PC yeah. is is way ahead of all of them because you don't need yeah. to pay for Steam to play online and you can voice chat using thousands of whatever you want Skype, Discord, uh, Teamspeak, mm-hmm. um, Raid Call or I, uh, well, I forget the name of it. But there's like you know and a lot of games even have their own audio thing. So the fact that I don't know Nintendo's like way behind here and uh, it's just. I mean, yeah, 20 bucks a year is, is, is really just a drop in the bucket for a lot of people. I mean, not everybody, of course. I, I don't want to, like, offend anyone there. But it's not, comparatively speaking, it's not that expensive. But what you get is also very underwhelming. So, yeah. That's... So, real quick, Graham, I'll go here. And um, I don't love the, the free, like, Games with Gold, PS Plus games-ish thing that they're doing. It's just NES games. And they pick them for you, which is true for gold and PS Plus as well. But I, I feel like with a lot of those games, I'm going to play it, and I'm not going to. I'm only going to play it for a little bit and never touch it again. That's kind of how I feel about a lot of them. I don't see myself going back. I think they kind of found a way to take something great with Virtual Console and make it something that's a subscription-based service where they get to choose the games that come to you, rather than letting some people go and get the games that they want and maybe virtual console wasn't used by a lot of people i don't know but i think they found a way to monetize it in a better way by making it a subscription model and then adding in other features that honestly are things that i expected to see on the 360 yeah um the phone app for party chat is ludicrous i've talked about it at length on this show before i'm not going to go on the rant again but it's embarrassing go ahead graham defend away (laughs) <laughs> well, 
I'll say this for one. It say it's twenty dollars for the year, but just because your online subscription is not that expensive, is no excuse for it to be a crappy service. So uh, I'm not gonna offend using your phone for a party chat because that is ridiculous. It's who, atrocious. Who are you? And now I'm like crying right now. I'm just so proud of you. I know. Um, Grim's growing up before our eyes. But some of these like game developers are realizing how terrible of an idea this is. And they are doing their own thing to uh, incorporate voice chat. I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, I'm looking to specifics. But yeah, no, there's no excuse. Like when I saw that, I'm like, wow, I got to talk to my smartphones to talk to somebody. It's like, what if my. I don't have my phone near me or I want to be away from my phone to play games. I was like, well, no, you can't be away from your phone if you're going to play Nintendo online. Um, and it, I know the fact that when they're showing the NES games, like I own an NES Classic, and the whole time I'm thinking, well, those are just games that are on the NES Classic. They had a couple, couple on there that wasn't on the list for the NES Classic. I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I was surprised that there was no Super Nintendo. I still feel like Super Nintendo will be coming to it. Um, Rainbow Unicorn. <laughs> Listen, you I'm know. trying to be a little bit optimist here. There was things amend that... Amend that and say you hope it comes to it. Because that's the fair thing to say, because I hope it does too, but they have given absolutely no indication that it will. No. I'd be really surprised if it don't. Like, but why if would... they were planning on it, why wouldn't they say, we're going to be bringing this too? Because that would get more people to sign up, wouldn't it? But why would you just stop at NES? There's no reason. You can run these other games. You can run. Why are they Nintendo using a phone games? app yeah. for <laughs> freaking party chat? N Nintendo is the dumbest business in the world. Okay? I have a lot of games on the GameCube I want to play again, and I don't own a GameCube anymore. There's a few Wii games I'd like to play. Give me Wii Sports Remastered for, for, for I'm watching my mouth here, for the love of all things. You know, I th why has that not been a thing? It seems so, like, uh, right there. Yeah. You have the Joy-Cons. That game is the reason the Wii is the highest sold console. Why is that not a thing? Why? And I, and I skipped the Wii U, and there are games I'd like to play on the Wii U, like the Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Um, give me that backwards compatible. I just, I don't get why Nintendo is so allergic to making money. I'm not saying Nintendo makes a lot of money to begin with, wow. but it's just so dumb that yeah, it's right there. You have the GameCube, the NES, the SNES, the 64, all these games you could make backwards compatible like the Xbox does that people would be down to buy. And Dude, they I, don't. I can tell you something right now. We're not going to see N64 or GameCube games on that thing until the classics for those consoles are out and through their life cycle. Yeah, I, I know that. I know that. I, we're not going to see them, and it's really dumb because I'd be down to pay like 20 bucks to 30 bucks for some of those yeah. games. And I just, I don't get it. It really boggles my mind here. Like, why is Nintendo so, I, do, I just don't get what, what numbers they're looking at. Like, it's, I feel like a lot of people are with me. They'd be down to pay, even if they don't necessarily yep. play it for that long, they'd pay for it. Um, I, I really, I just, I have no words. And I, I but... so yeah, off, offline, I, I said to Graham, and this is true because I've said it on the show before, but Graham argued with me because I dared offend the precious, you know, but I said the, the biggest reason I bought a Switch was for virtual console to experience all these games that I missed from not having a Nintendo system for forever, you know, on um, the last one I ever played was the NES. The last one I played a lot on, I did play a little bit on the Wii and uh, like a tiny bit of like super Nintendo stuff, I think. But really the, the last one that was my primary console at any point in time was the NES. And I'm telling you, Graham, if, if I had known up front that virtual console wasn't going to be a thing, I'm not sure I would have bought it. But I don't know why you would purchase the Switch just for that reason. If that's, I'm the, only game, if that's the only you. games you want to play, then why don't you purchase something else that will allow you to whoa, do that? Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I don't want to speak for Tyler here, but it's not saying that that's the only thing he wants to play, but it's one of the, the reasons he yeah. can play but the he, new but stuff he said he, and he can he play the old stuff. 
bought it if yeah, he be, knew he yeah, would be able because to get it. Graham, what I'm saying is, I'm not sure the argument would have been compelling enough for me to spend three hundred dollars on day one without that. Mm-hmm. Like, for, how you took forever to buy a PS4? They have the best exclusives out there right now for any of the systems. When you look at the total, like body of work this yep. generation, and I know Zelda's great and uh, Mario Odyssey's great. But that's too compared compared to, to the library that, that one place, year, the body of work PlayStation's put out. It took you forever. Every game that came out, you basically said, "I don't know if that's enough to get me to get it." You know, it's the same thing. Like Zelda alone would not have been enough to get to get me to spend three hundred dollars on that console and really three sixty with the mm-hmm. game. I mean, it was enough for me, so but Mario. I, but <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm a little upset. It just. Like part of me, just despite Nintendo, would rather buy if I re if I end up ever buying a GameCube again. I'm buying it used and games used. Well, you probably can't buy any new games anymore. No, I don't think you can. Um, actually, well, except from you can from Graham. You can buy um, new games from Graham because he has like four backup copies of each one, but still like, wrapped on the shelf. So all I can go me. buy used games, and Nintendo would get zero dollars <laughs> from that. Yeah. Um, but they could put them on the Switch, and they would make money. It's just like the the business mindset just it's so confusing to me it, it really is i don't want to beat this horse you know 500 feet into the ground cuz it's all it started 400 feet in but well and steven <laughs> i don't want to speak for you here but for me i'll say like i'm hard on nintendo Graham, because i so badly want to love it i do i want to want to play this console all the time but they keep giving me reasons to just be like ugh like, what are you doing? And I'm not as big of a Zelda fanboy as you. In fact, we're very opposite ends of the spectrum on that. Um, yeah. It's not enough. So, I, you know, I really wanted to see that as well. I wanted to see, like, virtual console so I could get caught up on all this awesome stuff I missed. While at the same time, being able to get these new games, because Nintendo as a first-party developer does a great job making games. And be able to get the ones that I'm really interested in playing in the current generation as well. But last point I want to make here, and this is, doesn't involve like Switch Online so much. In a way it does though. Only having, you know, multiplayer for certain games and all this stuff. And bragging about offering multiplayer with their new online service. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's an expectation. But this generation is all about the shared experience playing games in my opinion we've seen this generation the rise of destiny even though a lot of people have had not had a lot of fun with it it has a super loyal community that continues to play the division games like that it's it's become about this shared connected experience with games there there are not that many truly amazing single player games that have come out this generation compared to previous ones and I feel like Nintendo's behind the eight ball on that. I think that they're still clinging to what worked in the past. I feel like Nintendo looks to the past more than either Sony or Microsoft. Oh, I agree with that. Like their online service is a prime example of that. Yeah, they look, they look to the past, except when they're trying to put past games out. Yes, or in the case <laughs> of that, but yes. I don't know. Um, yeah. But, you know, let's go to a more so positive let's, let's go, note. Yeah, let's go to the good stuff the, from it, because it wasn't all bad. Like, it was only, like, a tiny bit bad. Yes. A lot of the stuff was awesome, so go ahead. Yeah. So, it started with uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. Or, or, I'm the only one out of us who ever played the original on the GameCube, and probably the only one of us that played the 3DS uh, sequel. Um, I, I won't be buying the remaster just cause I rarely play my 3DS anymore. I really wish, I think it was a mistake that the original, uh, Luigi's Mansion wasn't coming to the Switch. I, again, another decision that is confusing to me. Uh, but I will probably pick up Luigi's Mansion 3 because it's an amazingly fun game. It's like a weird premise, but it was really fun. And it was, it was basically Alan Wake before Alan Wake was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know we'll talk about that later. It was the same, Alan Wake reminded me so much mm-hmm. of it except just darker. Uh, but yeah. are, were you guys interested in what you saw, or I am? I up? actually am, and I it's it's the one game that really stood out to me and made me say, you know, I can see myself buying this and having a good time with it. So I'm very much intrigued. But 
I, I do want to ask real quick, and Graham, you might have interest in this too, but I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, and it's mostly just because I've never really played it. But Steven, I know you are. Uh, I, I was saving that for the end, but okay. Oh, you were? Okay, well, we can we can do it at the end if you want. I just know Graham's going to have a lot to talk about, too. But we'll, we'll save it for the end. We'll talk about Final Fantasy at the end. I just Graham... meant up this discussion, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> but, I, Graham, as... what, what stands out to you? Uh, for Well, I was going to talk about Luigi Mansion. Um, okay. I've not played any of the games, but... This game did get me excited for it. Um, we don't know when it's coming out. It's kind of like Metroid is like, this game is coming, so get excited. Did it say 2019 on it? I thought I don't, it did. I maybe, thought maybe it, it did, didn't. but I don't think it did. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't confirm it, but uh, no, like they had some great announcements. Um, that was one that caught people off guard, which it seems like Nintendo has been doing that, and they're showing that they're coming out with uh, all these games and stuff like that. They showed a lot of third-party support. Like, I don't know if you want me to go into depth of all the things that were announced during the Direct, but uh, there are some surprise ones. I'll tell you the biggest surprise for me. Uh, it was leaked before, but they officially announced it, and that was um, Civilization VI and City Skylines. Those were yeah. two big ones that I did not expect, especially for um, Civilization is not well it hasn't been announced yet but it's not coming to the xbox it's not coming to the ps4 so it actually went right from the pc to the nintendo switch and mm -hmm. i did not think that would happen like well, i honestly yet, didn't but... think it i didn't even think it would be able to handle it seeing what type of game it is so i'm curious to see actually how it plays i know on that day they did the big thing like they did with fortnite is like and you can play it today which is great. People love that. It resonates with people, and I'm sure mm -hmm. a lot of people went and bought it right at that time, and maybe they realized it didn't run that well, or they didn't like it, but they already spent that money, so I think that was great marketing. Um, I don't know, do you guys have any intentions playing these types of games on there, or you think it's uh, a good idea? No, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I think it's great, I just don't know if I have any intention of playing it. Go yeah. ahead, Steven. Cities didn't look that good based on, like, the no. trailer they showed. I thought it looked like it... I, I saw some hiccups, technic technical, technically speaking, and graphically it didn't look all that amazing. Civilization I'm interested in, but I, I think if I bought it again, I'd rather buy it on the iPad um, and play it, like, in between classes at school. Um Rather than buying it on the Switch, because I don't bring my Switch to school, but I am going... I mean, I use my iPad for countless things. Uh, but I, I don't think it's a bad idea. There's a lot of people that are interested in these games to play on the go, and that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for them. Um, there's yeah. a couple more things I want to talk about, if that's if that's all. Yeah, can I, can I that. jump in real fast? Just yeah. Because you guys are the two that we're excited about the most here. But, Graham, I just want to point out, high point for me is that you can do Pokemon hairstylist now. <laughs> but only in handheld mode. Yes, only in handheld mode. You can pet Evie and change the hair. And Steve was laughing at me because I looked at that and I was just like, that's so dumb. But uh, You know what that means. Nintendo Dog Switch Edition confirmed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that I might buy. <laughs> buy it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, go ahead. Just, just a couple of last big things. Uh, the the Super Mario Bros. U, uh, continuing the trend of every Wii game, Wii U game being re-released on the Switch. Uh, are you guys going to be picking it up? Um, I, I think I might. Yes, that's a definite yes for me. Uh, I'll get that one. Since you can play it co-op, like four-player co-op, I think is what it said. Um, I'd be interested. Uh, you guys aren't huge RPG fans. Before we get to the big one, but... The, the new Game Freak RPG, The Town, did, did you like what you saw of that? Does that interest you at all? You know, I, I enjoyed the, the yeah. art style of it. Um, I just don't know if it's enough to pull me in. Like, I'll see how the reviews go and if people like it. Like, I could feel like I could get into an RPG and that one might be the one. Like, I haven't played an RPG game for a while. And... I, I have played them way back in the past growing up, and I've quite enjoyed them, but I just haven't put any time into those types of games as of late. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it looks fine. I just don't know if it's for me. That, those types of games just usually aren't. Yeah, uh, the, the whole game takes place in one town, and I, I worry about that because that was what basically Dragon Age 2 did, and that caused Dragon Age 2 to get boring 
pretty quickly. Yeah. So I, I wonder if they can avoid this uh, or how they're going to avoid that fact. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I like RPGs, so I'll definitely keep my eye out on it. And then last thing before the big the big one, uh, Animal Crossing's coming to the Switch in 2019. By the way, Luigi's Mansion 3 is scheduled for some time in 2019. I, I, I looked that okay. up. Okay. Uh, but, but Animal Crossing's coming to the Switch. There is a weird, like, dichotomy uh, in the Nintendo community, and it's half the population loves Animal Crossing, and half the population despises Animal Crossing for some reason. I don't get it. I am a huge Animal Crossing fan. Um, it's very, I, I don't know, it's just relaxing. Um, I i mean, I get the jokes about Tom Nook, and I, I kind of, <laughs> I make them too. Uh, but the game's fun. I don't, I don't get why half the Nintendo fan hate the game so much. Um, are, are, are you guys, you guys ever play Animal Crossing, or are you guys interested in buying it be, based on I, what you saw? I or might you have didn't show I, you anything. But. I might have played some if there was Virtual Console, but no. <laughs> um, Graham, you? Uh, I did buy it for the 3DS. I played it a little bit, and. Yeah, like, it's really interesting. I like how the time of day where you are reflects time of day in the game, and I, I didn't get into it that much. Like, uh, I guess a game similar to it that I played was uh, Stardew Valley, but this for the Switch is a great game. Like I said, it was great on the 3DS. It's a portable. You take it with you. You can check in at any time like that. So I, I would pick this up for the Nintendo Switch and maybe jump in on it maybe an hour a day or two hours just to see what's going on in town and maybe, like, see what's going on in daytime versus night and just see that. But I, I understand what you're saying, Stephen, because some people love this game. They're excited for it. They can't wait for it. Some people even bought the Nintendo Switch just knowing eventually that will be coming to the system. I, I, so, it, I was part of that. The, the two games that I was... The reason I got it was Fire Emblem and Animal Crossing. And yeah. both of them are coming. So. <laughs> and speaking I mean, of I, Animal Crossing, uh, what's her name? Isabel. Isabel. Isabel is coming to Smash. Smash Brothers. <laughs> she going she gonna to beat everybody up. So basically before Smash Brothers comes out, there's probably going to be 130 f- characters to fight with. Like, holy moly. Like, they chose the right name when they called that Ultimate because they're just like, I don't even know when the next Smash Brothers is going to come, but to top this game... Wow, I, I don't even think this is gonna be top. I think this is gonna be like the pinnacle of uh, Smash Brothers. Have you guys ever heard the song like the ultimate showdown of Ultimate Destiny? Um, I think it was a no. YouTube song. Um, <laughs> no, it, I haven't. Basically, what it did was it, it 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 had the song was about every like pop culture and historical figure like being in a in a in a fight. That you okay. should really go lo- listen uh, listen to it. But that's kind of what this game reminds me of, just with how many characters there are. It's too bad you can't have all 130 characters in one map at one time, because that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think the switch would just yeah, the switch like, would blow start, up. But... It starts smoking yeah. and then just like when the TV screen, the little dot, and then disappear. All right, but so if that's everything, I, I'd like to talk about the big news for me at least for this Nintendo Direct that also is coming to the Xbox for the first time ever. And that is like uh, about half of the Final Fantasy games that were yep. released. Um, I'll just do a quick rundown. Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition, which is already out on the Xbox, is also coming to the Switch, or it's on the Switch. You got World of Final, Final Fantasy Maxima um, coming to both. Uh, Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon is only PS4 and Switch. And then you got Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition, Final Fantasy 7, 9, 10, and 10 2 HD Remaster, and Final Fantasy 12, all coming in 2019 to both the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One. Um, I am a big Final Fantasy fan. I liked uh, a lot of the games. I actually never played 7 or 9. I got into it late. I got into it 10 on the PS2. Um, so I will be picking up probably five of the the six games on the Xbox uh, because I just hmm. played my Xbox more. But this kind of came out of nowhere and it just got me pumped up because I did not expect this. And I'm really happy it's here. Yeah, I'm happy for you. Not, you know, not something I'm going to want to get into so much, but Graham, you? Uh, you know, I was talking about like, oh, I wouldn't mind getting to RPG. Um, and, you know, I might pick it up pick it up on the xbox over the nintendo switch just because 
I spend more time on my Xbox and stuff like that. And I still I have a lot of Switch titles to choose from. So and Steven always wanted his RPGs on his Xbox, so I'm happy that he's finally getting one, even though they're not original games. Mm -hmm. But it does open the door, and maybe Xbox will realize how popular RPGs are on their system when this comes out, and then they're like, okay, let's get some more RPGs on this system. Well, I'll bet you that one of these five new studios yes. is taking a big-time swing at an RPG. Well, yeah. it's got to be a, like a turn-based JRPG, because... I mean, the yeah. Western RPGs, while they're fun, aren't mm -hmm. aren't the same to me. There, it's yeah. it's not my my cup of tea for the RPG. But okay, fair enough. All right, anything else on direct, guys? Before we move on. No, uh, sorry for for having that go so long, but there was a lot to, to dissect <laughs> there. Was. There, that there was super Definitely. happy about so. All right, so let's move into other news. Uh, Insomniac says that Spider Man would not have been possible without Sony. And uh, basically, well, first we'll just uh, mention also that they, they also announced that the New Game Plus one is coming to the game, to Spider-Man. But within that first thing I mentioned, you know, Insomniac developers kind of said that, hey, Sony was super supportive throughout all this, and the, the game could not have been what it was without Sony. Every time they wanted to make a massive change to the game, that changed the entire game. Somebody from Sony would call, and all they'd ever ask was, is it going to make the game better? They'd say yes, and they'd say, all right, do it. I couldn't help when reading that. Couldn't help but think that that's as much of a shot at Microsoft for, I think there's some hard feelings over Sunset Overdrive. You think so? As it is, yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. As it is praise for Sony. Microsoft botched Sunset Overdrive. Yep. And I think that that game was put out at an awful, awful time. Steven, you and I were talking about, we actually went back and looked at the release window, like what came out around it. And there wasn't like a, a massive game like the week before it, but right after it started this like string of just super AAA games in 2014, including Call of Duty and Halo Master Chief Collection. And you basically made Sunset compete with Halo, which isn't fair. <clears throat> um, and we said that, you know, why not put the game out the following February and see how it does? Because I think that was the year that the Order 1886 came out. It would have just been competing with that game. Sunset was a far better game. Well, a far longer game for sure. Yeah. Because the, or the order was like, what, three, four hours, I think? I, I actually don't Yeah, something it. like that. Um, uh, but, yeah, Sunset was great, and it was in a terrible release window and definitely, definitely got hurt because of it, and Xbox dropped the ball. Um, I think Xbox did learn from their mistakes, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I think well, it was a shot, too. And I, good on Sony, uh, like, for as much yeah. as we, like, kind of get after them for some of their anti-fan service uh with the like ea access for instance and crossplay. um yeah. this is the type of thing that leads to good games yes 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 companies can get burned there are companies that just need delay 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 but mm -hmm. i i think well, it's they've kinda... got one of them in the family now what with, uh kojima Oh, yes. And he's notorious for delaying games repeatedly. Well, actually, Sony just as a whole is because, um, what was it? The Last Guardian was supposed to come oh, out yeah. in 2013, yep. took five years. And um, Persona 5 was supposed to be a PS3 game and didn't come out until. Actually, it might have even been a PS2 game and didn't come out to the PS4. So Sony does delay games. So I think they just don't care. Um, mm -hmm. and as long as it's good and honestly, like as much as we get annoyed of being like, Oh, when is this game coming out? It was announced five years ago and it's still not out. Like when it comes out and it's good, we forget all that and we forgive them. Um, when it comes out and it's not so good and Sony really hasn't done that, but other companies have where they just fight, like, they're like, no, no more delays. This game's coming out. And then the game comes out and it's not very good. We, we get upset. And well, so looking looking back now, would you have preferred that Sea of Thieves take another year? Yes. Um yeah, actually I no would I would have preferred the game being available in the state but in like early access. 
That was a game yeah, that would okay. be perfect for early access. I've talked about it before, and I really wish um, that that Xbox had more of that system. Um, I think mm. they're trying to start, but certain games lend themselves, and I think online games lend themselves more to uh, to being yeah. early access titles, but yeah, I, I think that would have helped the game more than just being delayed, because I think you need player interaction to figure out why, and you can't get that just by delaying the game. Um, yeah. But yeah. What's that game you speak of? I, I, don't, I don't remember that game. Sea of Thieves, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it was fun once upon a time, Graham. Yeah, in the beta. A long time ago. Back yeah, in the beta. beta. In the ba- yeah, back in the beta days. I would have been more upset about it if I had actually spent $60 on it. Yeah. But, but as honestly, for a Game Pass... We have not right, went back and gave it another try. No, we haven't. Because and, apparently but, it's a lot better. Than the like it, It's kind of the Division and No Man's Sky well, kind of thing. Sure. Where, here, here's my here's my question, Graham. Like, are we obligated? No, that's what I to mean. To give it another try. I know. Like, it, it's kind of like them like releasing like Sunset Overdrive in the wrong spot. Like, do we forgive them and the, all stuff like that? They're like, no. Like, we learn we're not falling for this again. So, so it's it is no excuse. Like, it's well, you, I you think... put it out at the right time. You make the right decisions. You make sure it's mm-hmm. ready because you can't be like, well. Sorry, guys, we messed up. Can you come back and try it now? Well, and then, you know, Microsoft botched Rise of the Tomb Raider, too. One of the best games this generation, in my opinion. And they launched it the same day as Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. And I love Xbox. And, you know, Phil Spencer was running the show at that point. And that was a mistake. But, yeah, I, I think the other part, though, to this, before we kind of move on, is... I think Microsoft or Xbox sort of held the sales numbers against Insomniac rather than owning up to the fact that they didn't do a good job mm-hmm. getting the release window right. Because they did promote the, the hell out of the game. They did. But you're putting it out at a point where you're making people choose between, you know, something new and, uh, and somewhat unknown and something that's tried and true and they know and love. Yeah. And, I mean, I I, I hate to speculate because I I can't be 100% sure, but I'd be willing to bet that if this game needed another delay, we wouldn't have seen it until next year because they would not have released the game around Red Dead Redemption 2 and Fallout 76. They just, they wouldn't have. And so it it, it was either September or probably January, February. Well, we, we said the same thing about the Battlefield, quote, delay, right? And it's... I mean, because we played the beta, it looks pretty ready, doesn't it? Yep, it's just... It's it's just, they don't want to release right there. They thought better about it, and they're putting it out November, what, 20th, or whatever it is, which is a good idea. Like, it's a good decision. Make make the decision and just, you know, look silly for a couple weeks, but they're not paying the the bigger price for that. Yep. By, yeah, by trying to squeeze it in there. So, Okay. Up next, guys, uh, FIFA 19 demo, Steven, is now available on the Xbox, PS4, and PC. You're the big, like, soccer or uh, football fan. I am. Among us. Uh, any interest in FIFA 19 this year? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I, I think I told you yesterday I, I was kind of interested in getting into Ultimate Team in FIFA um, this year, but at the same time, I've been playing Madden so much and kind of putting money in and, and feel... I, I wouldn't necessarily feel good about going to FIFA and then doing the same thing over there. Uh, but I do enjoy soccer probably more than I enjoy playing football. So we'll see. I, I'm, I'm interested. I don't need to play the demo to know if FIFA is going to be a good game. It's really like yeah. all these sports games. It's just basically improved every year. Um, only yeah. when generations switch is when you got to be worried. Uh, yes. But, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm interested. I'm, I just demos... I, I don't care about demos or betas because I just, at that point, if I play it, I just want the full game and then I have to wait. And I'm, as those who know me, I'm, I'm not the most patient guy. Uh, so <laughs> I, I'd rather just ignore it, pretend it doesn't exist until the day it comes out and then be like, yay, it's here. Time to play. Mm-hmm. So Graham, is there soccer in Canada? I, I hear there is. I, I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, no, well, no. Soccer well, there's, no, there is. There's gonna no, be. there is. You guys soccer are part of the big World around Cup here. Host. No, soccer is really big around here, actually. Um, mm-hmm. 
Well, like me growing up in Newfoundland, soccer was not on the radar whatsoever. Like we we used to kick a soccer ball around. I mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I play, I probably played in high school, but no, up here the soccer is pretty pretty big. Uh, when uh, when the World Cup and stuff is going on, you see people driving around with their flags and flapping in the air, and mm-hmm. and people are proud. They really like their soccer. But me personally, I don't I don't follow it too well. Um, plus, plus you have FC Toronto United, whatever the hell else they put on the names. Um, <laughs> so you do have an MLS club, at least one, right? You have Toronto. Is there any other one? Uh, I yeah, I think we just have Toronto. Vancouver. Does Vancouver have? I don't know. Maybe I know. I, I know Toronto does. I think Montreal does too. To be honest with you. <clears throat> okay. But uh, we're I'm sure we'll be corrected. Getting, we're getting a new league here. Uh, it's called the CPL. It's a Canadian Premier League. They're actually um, affiliated with uh, FIFA and stuff like that. So uh, mm-hmm. Hamilton, where I live, they will have a team and like all throughout Canada. So it's supposed to start up next year. Uh, one of my one of my coworkers will have season tickets, so I might go watch some of those games just to see. Uh, I've never watched a soccer games, so who knows? I could be the next big soccer fan. I mean, to making. be honest, Graham, any any league worth its salt is associated with FIFA. Um, so, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so that's I'm pretty that's sure. Not, like, I'm pretty sure, like I think like five year old leagues are associated with FIFA. But basically, I mean, so, you dude, dude, some of these clubs are signing guys at at well, I say guys, but boys kids. at twelve yeah. and thirteen, and I think there was a, there was a kid that was signed for by a big club at like six. Um, I think it was Barcelona that signed them, but yeah. I mean, I don't go into sports debate here, but, um, yeah, yeah. But, but, but Graham, I'm just saying like, you should, Canada should adopt the international word for soccer football, and then you <laughs> can name your league, the CFL, and you can have like four different teams named the Rough Riders and that would be the best. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking maybe some of these couple of these soccer teams would be the, the Rough Riders. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, the Canadian Football League has, like, two teams named the Rough Riders, which is amazing. It's just, like, one is one word and one is two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so they're totally different. But anyway. All right. Alan Wake. We talked about it earlier. Did. But a, a, a live Alan Wake uh, TV show, live action show, is in the works. Um, Remedy Sam Wake, the creator of the series, is uh, executive producer on it. I think this could be really good. Now, it's not set up for any, like, network yet. They're just announcing that they're going to do it and shop it around. But, like, it has, like, an X-File-ish vibe to it. A little bit and stuff like that. I think it could be really good if it's done right. Steven or Graham, your thoughts? Uh, Graham, you can go first here. Uh, You know, I haven't played Alan Wake uh, I know they had a mini series. I forget what it was called. It was on, I think it was on Netflix, or maybe it was even on the Xbox Store, like way back in the day. Yeah, it was like the prequel, right? Yeah, it was the prequel. Like leading up, yep. And like I watched it, and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. So uh, a live action TV show. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have been waiting for this, and a lot of people will watch it. Whether it's going to be like one of the bigger ones that people are going to remember, or it's just going to be like a blowover, uh, do we know if this is just going to be a Netflix series or is going to be on we actual don't. TV? We I don't. got a feeling no it's going to be a Netflix series because it seems like that's it's, the way this kind of stuff goes. It seems like it's made to be like one of those ten episode run type things, you know, and not a full like TV show that gets like twenty four episodes a year. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like ten episodes a year is the right way to go here. I think oh. HBO or Stars or Showtime would be good to have this, but yep, I agree. That's I think possible. It'd be fantastic on there. Um, but I think it's really good subject matter for a show. Yeah, and... I, I, the game was really fun. Um, I, I just curious how they're gonna do like the whole burning the darkness away, like in in yeah. a TV show. Um, how that's gonna work? I mean, I, I imagine the flashlight's gonna probably break. You know, we could probably do, like, a drinking game or, like, the Alan Wake bingo of, like, the flashlight breaks yeah. or runs out of battery and, right. <laughs> and yeah. Alan Wake struggles to find a battery we're, to, to get not, the light back on. But We're not we're not letting Graham do any more drinking games after <laughs> after his drunk soul's experience. Come on, man. That was fun. 
It, yeah, it, Graham, you were sleeping at five in the afternoon. It's, it's way to get to bed in three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm so, interested. Pr- pr- I, there's nothing. Yeah. Like I, I'd like to see more, but I, I'm, in, I'm glad that there's some game, games that are are becoming some TV shows. I still think The Last of Us would make an interesting TV show. Yes, um, absolutely. And but I just wonder if we're too zombied out on TV. Yeah, that it might that it might not be successful. You know, people might not want to give it a chance. But I the the subject matter there and the like the the story of that game is fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. And pro tip: uh, don't play Drunk Souls if <laughs> it's your first the time. Yeah, oh. <laughs> if it's your first time playing through. Not a good idea, Graham. Do you concur? Yes, sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> Unless you're looking to get drunk. <laughs> well, then. It is amazing. Graham, that was tough to watch. I was sitting there watching the majority of that, and I was like, go this way, Graham. Go this way. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, I, I... What? I'm scared. Oh, I'm going to go the way where there's an even bigger and badder and tougher guy that's going to just absolutely murder me. <laughs> it, it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. didn't make it out of Undead Bird, for those of you that play Dark Souls. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I need to try it sober just to see if I'm really not that bad. Because <laughs> I, sure, I, 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 I was pretty bad. <laughs> not going to lie. How much do you remember of the last, like, 45 minutes of that stream? I, uh, you know... It's it's very blurry. Yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> well, those... it was for us, too. Yeah, for sure. I, like, I, I went back and I watched it, and I feel it was pretty entertaining. Yeah? Okay. I don't know what the rest I, of the world I, thinks, but, uh, you know. Well, I'm glad, you know, I, I, I can't say one way or the other, Graham, but I'm glad you feel that way. So, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll move on, and I'll wrap up news with this. Uh, Xbox's Aaron Greenberg said this week that Xbox didn't need Crackdown 3 to launch this holiday season. My first reaction to that was, really? You don't? Because you don't have any exclusives other than Forza, which is a niche game, coming out this fall. So, but then I kind of read into the quote, and it makes a lot of sense. He says, quote, we're going to get Forza Horizon 4 out early. Uh, It comes out October 2nd. And before the blast radius. We didn't need Crackdown or any of our titles in this holiday window. We're planning to launch that in February, and then after that, we'll launch Ori and the Will of the Wisps. We like to have a steady cadence of content throughout the year, but there's more than enough content this holiday. That's why we're working with so many third-party partners to showcase their games and help drive our platform during that window, end quote. And he went on to say that this is maybe the most packed holiday season he's ever seen with, like, super AAA releases, now I'm actually thinking this is a really good decision because in the past they've made this mistake with Sunset Overdrive and with Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is you got to get into that holiday window because it's a huge game. And I feel like we moved away from that because now next February, next March, next April is really packed with games. Graham, are you happy to see it being thinned out a little bit and spread out and then making this decision for Crackdown 3? Or would you still rather see everything come out in the fall? No, because like I feel like they've gotten in trouble in the past where they have no games and stuff like that. So if they don't have that many games that we know of anyways, and if they all come out in the fall, we're like, well, look, they had no games next year, right? So I kind of like how they're just spacing it out and stuff like that. Uh, I'm mainly concerned about Ori and the Will of the Wisp, to be honest with you. Um, and Forza, um, I'm, I downloaded the demo. I haven't played it yet, so I'm not like hooked into that. But I do think it's a good strategy just to just to, like spread it out over the course of a year. And I don't know if they're just doing it from damage control and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's my thoughts on it. What do you, I think it's a good idea. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. I think that... They're clearly learning from past mistakes. And, you know, Graham, would you even consider buying Crackdown 3 if, take Game Pass out of the equation, if it came out, like, between, I don't know, um, uh, Assassin's Creed and uh, Red Dead and Fallout? 
No. Would you even consider buying Crackdown 3? No. To be... To be... <laughs> I have no desire, any thought of downloading. Like, because it's free on Game Pass, Yeah, I will probably download it. And maybe we'll try one, because it's multiplayer, right? Yes. Do we know? Yes. Yep. So, I'll, like, I would try it with you guys, just to try it, but I have no desire whatsoever to play that mm-hmm. game or try it. And even if it got really good, like, ratings, I don't even know... Like, from what I watch, nothing is drawing me into it at all. And it is another shooter and whatever. It it means nothing to me. I mean, I think yeah, it's more it's, of like a yeah. superhero game type of thing. Like a superhero cop. Mm-hmm. And that's how the first yeah. game, at least. I mean, I haven't played them, but based on what I've seen. Yeah, hey, um, I've never played any of them. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to answer that question as well, Tyler. Uh, if mm-hmm. The only way I'd consider buying this game is if it came out in, like, June. Um, yeah. and And it would have to get good reviews. Because otherwise, I, I wouldn't be touching it. I just, again, it's it nothing I've seen really, like, draws me in. Like, I need this game right now. Um, and I think putting it on Game Pass is a really smart decision because I wonder mm-hmm. what sales would be like if it didn't. I'd be a little afraid of what sales would be for that game if it wasn't on Game Pass. So, yeah, yeah I'm with you on exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. But I think more than anything, that quote just shows that they sort of learned from past mistakes and they're going to kind of move forward and make better decisions. So, yep. finally. All right. I know. Anything else on that, guys, before we move out of news and into releases? Nope. 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 We are good. All right. So, that's it for news this week, everybody. We're going to move into releases, and we'll start with Xbox. We kind of get a week off next week from craziness, and then I think we go right back in. Um, but next week, you can get transference on the 18th. Scribble Knots Mega Pack also on the 18th, and My Brother Rabbit on the 21st. Games with Gold, uh, Live Lock uh, now available through the 15th of October. Prison Architect on the Xbox One through the end of the month, or actually, yeah, through the 30th. And Sega Vintage Collection backwards compatible, uh, Sega Vintage Collection Monster World through the 30th of September. So that's it for Xbox. Steven, what do you have for PlayStation? All right, uh, all these are on the 18th. You can get Anodyne, uh, Mutant Football League Dynasty Edition. And I'm not sure Tyler was correct when he said it's not crazy this week because you can get Fishing Sim World on the 18th. Exactly. Um, For PS Plus games, uh, Destiny 2 and God of War 3 Remastered are available through the end of the month. There's a few others, but those are the two big ones. Uh, Graham, Nintendo, go. Go. All right, for Nintendo, we have Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusk that will be available September the 18th. Then also on the seventh uh, September 18th we have Scribble Knots Mega Pack. And to end off the great week on February September 21st, which happens to be my birthday, you will get the Banner Saga trilogy. So here's to getting the Banner Saga trilogy for my birthday. H- had to find Graham. a way to sneak that in there, eh, Graham? Yeah, he did, didn't he? And uh, sneak one in. I, I was just like <laughs> saying, man. It was the, um, it was Graham, the only what... other game that was released, and it just happened to be on September twenty first. <laughs> Graham, Graham, what free games can I get on Nintendo this week? Uh, you can get Fortnite. Fortnite is available. Uh, <laughs> ooh, he finally had an answer for that. <laughs> he did. I just, say, I had to sneak it in one more time. You can get the Mega Man 11 demo. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I just, I had to get it in one more time before their That's wonderful true. online service goes well, live and I can get games, you know, that were made, um, long, long ago. So stay tuned for next week when I introduce my new segment of <laughs> saying free games for the Nintendo Switch. All right. And all with release dates before the day Steven was born. This is so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, all right. anyway, uh, let's go into uh, questions. Steven, what do we have from our community this week? Got a lot, a lot of good ones. Uh, let's start with JLT Stevens on Discord. S. what is the most underrated single-player video game on any console and why? Um, Graham, I, I got, I got one. I'll, I'll okay, go ahead. Two. I'll save you two. It's, a, it's, it's a tie. Well, okay, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna save the other one because I think Tyler's gonna say it. Uh, Lost Odyssey, criminally underrated. Um, it, it had, it was, 
I mean, it didn't do anything special combat-wise from a JRPG, but the story was... Actually, and the story was pretty normal, but there were these, like, uh, dreams that you can unlock by, like, going... If you go to a certain area, like, on the map, like, you can just find them. And the, they were, like, little short stories, and they had some beautiful music, and they were the most interesting stories um, that were written. Like, they drew me in. I, I just... Some of them made me, like, really sad, too. It, I, it was a very, very, very fun game. It's backwards compatible. In fact, um, <laughs> when it came first came to backwards compatibility, it was free. Uh, they was, like, their treat to us. And I hope people downloaded it. And if you, if you did and you haven't played it, like, if you're a JRPG fan, give it a go. Because uh, for releasing in 2006, the game still looks really good. And those, those uh, little short story sequences are not to be missed. It's... It's criminally underrated. Uh, okay. Tyler or Graham, you can go next. <clears throat> out of out of curiosity, Stephen, what did you think I was going to say? Sunset Overdrive. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'd call that underrated because it got reviewed really well. Sure, it but it just didn't sell. That's what I'm saying. It's underrated because it didn't get the sales didn't match the reviews. Okay. Um, well, if if we're going by those rules, I'll say that. But I'll tell you the other thing I was going to say. Um, cause there's one series out there that is bought by millions of people every year, but for the multiplayer and not the single player. And that's Call of Duty and Call of Duty's campaigns and stories are usually pretty bad. Um, to the point that there isn't even one this year, but I thought the campaign in Call of Duty 4 was phenomenal. I thought it was really, really good. And, um, honorable mention to a game that. People probably, a lot of our listeners have never even heard of. Uh, it's called Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard. The game, don't get me wrong, it's not very good. It got scored like fives across the board out of ten. But it's just really funny and it made me laugh a lot. And it's basically a spoof on every kind of shooter, every big shooter franchise that was around at the time. And a lot of fun. But yeah, if you're allowing Sunset or Drive, yeah, I'll definitely say that because that was great. Yeah, and and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more thing. The last mm-hmm. remnant on the 360, it didn't get reviewed very well, um, unlike Lost Odyssey, because it didn't perform very well. But it was it came out right at the same time 360 allowed you to install games to your hard drive, and that made them play better. And that was one game that once it once you installed it, it played perfectly, and the and the it was really fun. Um, and so sorry, Graham, you can go. You know, I've been racking my brains and racking my brains. And I can't think of anything. Um, Maybe like Breath of the Wild because Tyler didn't like it. Criminally underrated. <laughs> well, like everyone I would say, I'm it's like... It's not even that I didn't like it. It's just not for me. It's underrated by certain people, but uh, no. Um, no, nothing really stands out that I've played that I'm like, I don't know if anybody else has ever played this or have enjoyed this, but I really like it. So, sorry, but uh, I'm going to have to go with no comment. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised, taking a cop Steven. Out answer. Steven, I'm surprised you didn't say long shot. <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> a game. That was just a game mode. Well, that was story, though. That was story mode. Yeah, I game. guess. So, um, not, right. very, not a very good one, but yeah. <laughs> all right, Atlas, what is the best, or ask, what is the best free game? Fortnite, hands down. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say that, too. Uh, I disagree. Uh, okay. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's the best. Yeah, it's not um, my best. <laughs> uh, Smite was is a game I got super addicted to because it was free, and then I well, it's free quote unquote because you have to end up purchasing gods, but you could play most of the game free um, and unlock some gods. But I, I I enjoyed that. It was really fun for a MOBA, especially on a console. It's the only MOBA. That was worth its salt on the console. Um, and yeah, that's, so that's my answer, because Fortnite's the boring answer and the cop-out answer. And I still don't think it's the best. Well, oh, so when I say it's the best, I say so because it's brought so many people into gaming that otherwise would not have been. And it's yeah, made gaming a lot more mainstream. So that's why I say that. It's not like the best in terms of quality. It is by far the most popular game in the world right now. But... Yeah, so yeah. I'll stay. I'll stay with that. All right. Uh, you know, Angry Birds, Graham, do it. 
Oh, that's no, a good answer, though. But that is a good one. But Candy Crush. <laughs> Can I answer my question? No. <laughs> no, it was more fun when you were gone and we just yeah. answered questions <laughs> yes, for I you. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to be on this, the first um, segment. It is. I haven't played it for a while, but when I played it, and you guys, Tyler know me back when I used to play it, um, and this was The Simpsons tapped out on my iPad. That game was so enjoyable and absolutely free, even though I spent money on it, but you didn't have to. That that game was awesome. And it ate up a ton of my time and stuff like that, and I kind of got out of it. And I know if I get back into it, I'll be into it full-fledged again. <laughs> but, like, I stayed on top of everything, and now I feel like I missed out on so much that I don't want to know what I missed out on. Ooh, Twitch chat yeah. pointed out Fallout Shelter, and I think you forgot oh, about that. Graham. Um, Graham. But, Graham, you sounded a little like the most interesting man in the world guy. Because you're like, I don't often play free games, but when I do... <laughs> Guess, yes. guess what I'm <laughs> drinking right now. <laughs> um, oh well, Rumham, you reminded me of Fallout, and that was a game Graham got addicted to for a while, so I said it. Um, all right, next question uh, from Gambler uh, asks, "Where do you guys stand on grouping up with squeakers, aka younger kids?" Uh, he sees many <laughs> looking for groups, saying they're not welcome, and he he doesn't have a problem playing with them as long as they can stay on task and aren't too obnoxious. Um, you guys See, go let, first. Yeah, let me go first here because you have a story to tell. I do have I a think. story, and I I'll say this: like Graham, we played NHL with a kid who I think was like what eleven. Yep, he was young or something. So here's where I'll come down on this: like if it's in a group setting, a lot of people in chat, I'm okay with it as long as like the question said, they stay on task and whatever, and they're not like little douches. But, man, I'm going to tell you, one-on-one, -on -one, I don't think I'd feel comfortable getting in a chat and playing with, you know, somebody who's, like, 10 or yeah. whatever. Uh, Graham, you? You know, like, personally, in, like, a little, like, especially party chat, uh, not really just because, like, I usually hang out with older people and stuff like that, so I have a lot harder time, like, Mining my P's and Q's, I guess, uh, for a lack of better words. But, you know, I have no problem actually playing with them and stuff like that. Because, like, I've seen a lot of younger kids really good at hockey. And, like, they actually even play, like, hockey and they know about it and stuff like that. So, you know, it depends. And I have lots of nephews and nieces who, like, I would probably play with. But uh, I wouldn't bring them into any of our parties because I know, I know what these people talk like uh, <laughs> <laughs> off stream. But, uh but overall, yeah, I just because they're young, I'm not like, oh, they're no good. I don't want to play with them and all that stuff because someone can be really mature for their age. And even older people like us, we can be really immature for our age. So I, I can't I couldn't put a number on like a kid that I wouldn't like uh, play a game with. Yeah, um, Graham, we've we've never encountered anyone older than any of us who <laughs> acts like that. Never. Never, ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know what that's like. Um, I'll go. Because I have... Well, one, Gambler, are you stalking me? Um, but two, I, I, have, <laughs> I have views from both sides of the coin. So I'll start by saying, this week, I was invited to a party by... <laughs> and added on, face, or on Xbox by someone I was like, I have no idea who this is. And, I, you know, curiosity... So I accepted the chat, and it took forever to join the party. And and I, he like he he's a squeaker, like he's seven, is what he told me. And I I still feel like I was being messed with, and I'm gonna end up on YouTube. So look out for that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he he talked to me, and I'm like like how how do you how do you find me or whatever like blah 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 blah. And he was like he's just adding random people. I'm like. Uh, you know, little life advice, buddy. Um, I, I don't know if I'd go around adding random people on the internet. That that can be dangerous. Um, and and yeah, I was just trying to, cause I I work with kids, and so I I could not get that out of my head of playing with one of like the kids that I work with. And I so no, I I can't do it like that, especially that young. 
Um, but when I was young, 13, um, Xbox 360 was like, li- Xbox Live got huge back when I was in, when I was 13, 13, 14. And I, I don't know if I'd be considered a squeaker then. Um, I, I think I would have been, but I don't know. Uh, and I played with people that were like 25, 30 ish. And I, again, I, I get along with people that are like Graham. I tend to get along with people older than me more. Um, even at my own age, I have trouble connecting with. I just am like, I just understand people older than me. Um, so I, I don't have a problem playing with young, younger kids, but anything under like, 13 is where I'm like time yeah. out. I, I I can't I can't do it anymore. Um yeah. And I mean maybe that's hypocritical cuz I when I was that age I I played with kids older than me or people older than me but I don't know. That's So that's I, I, I I feel like I have to clarify cuz chat was like did Tyler just call kids little douches? <laughs> That's what I heard. So first of all, I said as long as they're not being little douches. <laughs> so but just to clarify, and two, we've all been in those games before where you hear like this super high pitched voice telling you all about your mom, you know. And I'm just like, nope, I don't need that. Like, it, it, at least go through puberty first before we have that discussion. <laughs> um, but. And Steven, for the record, like, you know, you still squeak sometimes, so it's okay. Yeah, apparently. That's okay. We're um, happy to play with you. All right. Graham? Well, can, I, can I go to the next question now? No, yes, yeah, no, go. I'm okay. I'm happy mood. All right. Here? <laughs> go. All right, King Ross <laughs> says, do you guys think more companies will follow Ubisoft's uh, Rainbow Six Siege model and instead of making several games a year, update the same game over several years? Uh, I'll answer first. No. Mm-hmm. But it'd be nice. I mean, I think Rainbow Six has um, has updated their content pretty well. And they did the same with The Division, too. So I, I, I say The Division as in also, not the second Division, which is now mm-hmm. yet. Um, so I, Ubisoft's kind of gone that way with their multiplayer games. I, I, I feel like uh, that Ghost Recon game's getting the same sort of treatment. I could be wrong. Um, and I, mm-hmm. Destiny, like... And I assume Anthem will be as well. Will will also be like that, where they get updated for for a little bit before the next game comes out. But I can't say a lot of games will go like this. I can't see Call of Duty or any of the EA games. As much as we would love the EA games to do this, where they come out on a two or three year cycle and just update rosters, yeah. they won't because of Ultimate Team and how much money it makes them. So that's my answer. So here, here's what else. I agree. I agree with you a hundred percent on the EA sports games. Never going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I am going to say yes with an asterisk to other types of games like Ubisoft, etc. If, like say Next Gen, if some of these developers and publishers start launching their own subscription-based services and they can get you for 10 bucks a month, I could see them going that model more. Where they just continue to support a game over time without having to pour all this money into starting from scratch on a brand new game just continue to support an existing game for three years four years and then maybe putting on a sequel every four or five rather than every one or two like how much Um, if 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 games could go the world of warcraft route um where the subscription base and they put out like an expansion every few years for i I can't say off the top of my head how much they are. I, I want to say forty, but they might be sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, like, but they obviously it's been worth it to them because they're still doing it. That game came out like thirteen years ago. I I can't remember the exact data. I, I think it was two thousand five. Yeah, it's a while. Ago. Um, so if if yeah, I agree with you there. If, if they can ever do something like that, yes, we're more likely to see that because they they save time and money by not having to develop new games. Um, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I, I don't see a lot of companies doing it without the subscription thing mm-hmm. with it. Uh, Let me ask this real quick. Uh, I think there's a good chance that within the next five years we see, like, the EA Sports games especially, Ultimate Team become a free-to-play game on its own. It's possible. And I think Interesting. that... Yeah, where you can still go in and all the microtransactions are there, obviously, right? Would they go up? But... No, I don't think so. But I would, I I would have done do... that this year. Yeah. 
I don't. Well, no, I would buy Madden because our community's like connected franchise. Okay, yeah, mine is. And that. I would buy, I would buy NHL, but I don't know. I can't say I'd buy MLB if they went that route, because I mostly play Diamond Dynasty. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's an interesting thing because I think a lot of people play those games for the Ultimate Team mode, and that's the only thing they play. So it'd be interesting to see them go that route. But anyway, that's a total side point. Graham, what are your yeah. thoughts on oh, the question? Oh, so you're really ready now for my answer? Okay. <laughs> well, no, right, I I'll, just wanted to be nice and involved. You, you I'll, care, tell right? you, I'll tell you Tyler Graham's answer, okay? okay? So so Graham's, mm-hmm. Graham's on this would be like, Graham, here's where you chime in. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I think other companies will go with that model uh, just for certain games that will, like, uh, benefit from it. I think you're like PUBG. I don't think they're going to release another PUBG. I think that's like an online battle royale. And it's staying with the battle royale um, theme. I think Fortnite as well. I don't see them releasing another Fortnite. I think they're just, will just keep like uh, maybe doing content uh, additions throughout year. I don't know how many years. Will it be like a two, three year thing? But I think games like that more suit that kind of um, idea. And who knows, like Tyler said, maybe they will become a subscription kind of thing. Uh, I don't know if Fortnite will do that. I think they'll be staying to, to, with the free-to-play model, even though they've made so much yeah. money, they could get greedy. Fort- but Fortnite could never go subscription at this point. Like, it would be such a backlash. Yeah. Yeah. It just no. Well, they they're don't need they're, to. they're raking they're... in money off yeah. of microtransactions. People in that are game. buying... Yep. Co- costumes and like smite did the same thing i mean the god pack wasn't even that expensive it was 30 bucks so that's half the price of any any of the other things and mm-hmm. people just bought the gems and bought costumes and voice packs and yeah so yeah yeah all right um all right. next question david pantera asked preferred game to play with a friend who wants to get into gaming graham you go first preferred game play with a friend who wants to get into gaming um, you know, a nice, good multiplayer, right? Co-op one, I would think would be Unraveled 2. Um, just to see how you can see the music or not see the music, hear the music and just see how like beautiful the game can be and like how they're just not shooters and they can be a bit puzzly and it's a fun game. Like you can interact with each other and talk and like try to figure out things. So I think that's a great game to like to get a friend to try. Just to play with, right? Um, there's other games that I would say they try on their own, like like maybe Fallout, but that might be a little t- too in over their head. So I'll stick with Unravel 2. Tyler? Yeah. Um, something that's new to gaming. Man, uh, I don't know. I think... Uh, actually, Steven, if you got one, go ahead. Well, see, I have a, I have a few, and that's why I would... Go ahead. Okay. Go for it. So it depends on what your friend is interested in. Like, if he's, like, a big, like, Dungeons & Dragons fan and never played um, games before, I'd say, like, Divinity Original Sin 2 is a perfect game because you play that game fully co-op, and it's, it's like, Dungeons & Dragons, but in game form. Um, Borderlands wouldn't be a bad one if he's into shooters. If they like just hacking and slashing, uh, Castle Crashers would be good, or Diablo 3. Um, and then also you could play games like Cuphead, uh, if you're couch mm, co-op, yeah. that, I thought that, that wouldn't be a terrible game. Only couch co-op though. They don't have an online co-op. It's hard game. Though. Um, and then Unravel 2, like if, if he's more puzzly, um, or Portal 2, if you, uh, if you want to go way back, has oh, yeah, that, that co-op yep. mode. So I, I think that kind of crosses the spectrum, um, for games, uh, like obviously you could play sports games with them if yep. they're a sports fan. So I think that covers basically everything. So pick from those if uh what yeah i might like you actually took the one that came to mind which was unravel you said unravel too though i, I was thinking the original um, uh he he's he specifically game to play, play with. with yeah yeah and oh with so oh yeah okay unravel too can't unravel too then okay all right fair point and but i, I like steven said i think it depends on the type of games that they like or what their interests are and because if you know you don't want to introduce somebody and be like Dark Souls is my favorite game. Let's play that. Correct. Because they wouldn't be a fan of video games very long, right? But Or somebody like me, you wouldn't want to bring me in and be like, let's play Dragon Age. 
or Skyrim, even though it's great, right? Yeah. Um, it, it depends on their interest, but there's there's tons of games. Steven, you actually took you know the the franchise I was going to hit on, so I'll stick with Unravel for that. But there's a ton of games out there, indie games that you can get into, and even like the super simple like board game type games or Jackbox Party Pack or stuff like that are really easy to kind of yeah. get people into gaming too. And, and I mean, if they're interested in shooters, like the Halo campaign wouldn't be, you can play the MCC collection. Yep. Um, or actually, I, that's saying collection yeah, twice. <laughs> but the Master yeah. Chief collection. Because um, you can play one through four together. Um, co-op, two-player co-op. And if they're into shooters and maybe like sci-fi stuff, like that, that kind of covers all the bases. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, there's, a, there's a few games out there. A few games out there for sure. And it's also just based racing, on what you're... Racing games. Yeah, I mean, I, I count that at sports. Forza Horizon. So, that's an interesting debate. We should talk about that. Are racing games sports games? Should racing games be, like, up for sports game of the year? I don't, but let, let's... Well, save that. Listen, that's, that's a discussion uh, for another time. I would say other games should be out of that, so I'm not going to get into that argument, but uh, yeah. I would put uh, racing want to get in away it, from this and, and over you, a you lot start. of other <laughs> um, <flat laughs> sports games. Okay. Uh, next question. Brian Richland asks, uh, I feel like this is directed at me here. He says, when you play a game, uh, do you focus on the main mission, like, basically only? Or do you do the side quests and get collectible stuff as well? How often do you 100% games? Uh, uh, you. I'll, let me let me go first here real quick, because yeah, I'll go. get it out of the way. It totally depends on the game and how much it grabs me. Some games, I like, the side mission stuff just doesn't interest me, because that the lore of the game just hasn't grabbed me and i just want to power through the game but i'll say games like sunset overdrive i collected everything in that game did all the side missions did absolutely everything um spider-man i'm probably going to do the same thing so probably fair to say if it's an insomniac game i'm going to do it but it depends on the game for me steven i'll let graham go first so i was basically going to say exact same thing tyler said Mm -hmm. because like if I play a game and I'm really enjoying it, then I want to prolong that game as long as possible. So I will go on all the side quests. Like I wouldn't say I'll 100% it because some of these games have just a ridiculous amount of side quests and like fetch quests and all that stuff. Like I more or less lean away from the fetch quest if it's like collect 200 feathers or 900 Korok seeds would be a good example, which make me forget i forgot about that game (laughs) gonna have to get back to that one um but yeah it all depends on the game like i went through the first tomb raider um it wasn't until the second time i played it that i went with like along with a guide so i'm like okay i'm gonna get every every little piece and stuff like that and another thing if i can get it come up on the map where i know where it is and where i can find it then i'm more likely to go collect that but if I got to look around everywhere to try to find it, then I might veer more away from it and focus on the quest. Like, a good example is uh, The Witcher 3. I would have loved to spent all the time in the world and went and done every side quest. But there's probably about 500 objectives, like little question marks all over that little map. Probably not that much. But uh, I was... I basically wanted to get through the story because it's a great story. So basically I didn't do many side quests at all. I just focused on the main story and I'm kind of glad I did because I think it was a travesty if I didn't like go through the main story and I just got bored with it or not really bored, but moved on to like the next thing. Cause I spent so much time just collecting like a sword or something. And now I'm done. Now you can go Steven. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I want to 100% every single game I play. Um, it's because I, I do get grabbed by a lot of games. It's just I end up not being in the game, which is why in Spider-Man, you guys heard me on Sunday. I was like, I'm just, I'm just powering through and doing the, doing the main missions. And then I was like, I'm just going to I'm, – I'm skipping everything. I'm just doing that, and I'm going to beat this game. And then I did. Um, and yeah, like I want, I, I might go back and complete everything. We'll see. Uh, I want to, I just, I just, uh, have it. And the last game I hundred percented was final fantasy 13, two on the 360. Uh, yeah. So that's my answer. 
And Graham, I think you make a great point on the fetch quest. Like the more the side quests are like that, the less I want to do them. Mm-hmm. Hundred percent. So, all right. Uh, one more. All right. Let's find a. Uh... Well, I think we do two. Well, it depends how much. Okay. Well, yeah, we, can do we got two, two really we got time. ones. Okay. Ethan Workman asks, what is your favorite Halo campaign? If we're going by game, um, the obvious answer is Halo 2, but I'm going to go Halo Reach. That is my favorite. Um, um, I'd agree with that. Um, basically the same thing you just said. Halo Reach was really fun, but Halo 2 for the mainline games was the best. Yep. I never played Halo Reach. I, it won't be one because the flood was, uh. <laughs> so I'm going to, plus go, like, I'm gonna plus go like you can easily get, remember Graham, we got lost in one, oh. which was really embarrassing for me because it was like the fifth or sixth time I've played it. Yeah. And yeah. We spent an extra bad. two hours probably yeah. in no, a level. I, it's Instead easy just, to get lost. Just going because... up. If we just the, went up, we would have been done. <laughs> the, the problem was the first half of the game has you going one direction, especially when you get, land on the, the uh, yep. arc. Then the second part has you going backwards the opposite direction, so the arrows mm-hmm. are really confusing. And yes, I, like, I was playing by myself, and I got lost too. And I think I played on easy because I really hate Halo 1's difficulty um, spike. I It's just mm-hmm. it's stupid. Like You're, you're going to give a, a flood of rocket launcher in a corridor – uh that's just bad game design yes like we played the second hardest yeah whatever that is i forget what it's called but yeah heroic yeah yeah i (laughs) yeah it's i don't want to go on a on a diatribe here but it it was just just, fun taking graham through his first halo experience on heroic in halo c yeah play like play (laughs) if, if halo is your if you're just playing halo for the first time do play halo one on easy Go through it. Go play the other ones on normal, heroic, or legendary. They're all possible. Um, Halo 3 is really easy on legendary. Um, yeah. And then go back to Halo 1 if you really want to. But I don't recommend yeah. Halo 1 on anything harder than like normal. But even normal is going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, yep. But yeah. All right. And then last question. Uh, Seth Simons, or Simmons asks, if I'm only going to buy one of the two games, which one should I buy? Spider-Man or Red Dead Redemption 2? Red Dead 2 all day long. Um, it's going to have a huge online component that you want to get in on right away. Plus, Rockstar is known for making stories that are just epic. And Spider-Man is so much fun. I don't want to downplay it. I don't want to like may say that it's not good. It's fantastic. But it's going to be the exact same game whether you play it today or you get it for 30 bucks next February or March. Yeah, it's an interesting comparison between the two. Um, I, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 and Fallout is a better one, but I would also say Red Dead. Unless you're just dying to play Spider-Man right now, um, I, I would wait. Yep. And Graham? me, I would say Red Dead Redemption 2 just wow. because, well, you'll get more game time out of it. It's mm-hmm. It is online, and it is Rockstar Games, so it's going to have a huge world. And it's going to be like, if it's going to be anywhere near GTA V, this game is going to be played for six years or something like that. So I think by far Red Dead Redemption 2, overall, the longevity is a way superior game to Spider-Man. Not taken away from Spider-Man, it's just like, it's like fairly short. You guys got through it fairly fast well no it's it's really not it's it's a 25 hour game and 30 plus if you do all the side stuff yeah yeah but... you just think we got through it fast because it took us like from release to the day we, we were... beat it was like three we days were... but we played for like <laughs> eight hours yes. a day yeah <laughs> yes i was so hooked on it and that's like something for me i usually don't do that with games yeah. but i absolutely did with this one so and steven it's even more of a thing for you yes so all right cool well uh that let, let's let's wrap up questions there so thanks to everybody who's sending questions and please send them in every week if you submit a question you are entered to win our monthly giveaway which we do in the last episode of every month but today is the day that we do our patron exclusive giveaway of a full 60 dollar game and steven's here to announce the winner and I, I think we could call this a fun fact of the day yeah yeah, uh, fun fact of the day, uh, Piracy, you are the winner of the pa- patron giveaway, so congrats to you, bud. 
Um, yeah, Tyler will tell you what choice of games you have. Well, and actually what we're going to do is contact me, and we'll get you a list of four. Um, we, we try to tailor it to the individual and what they like, so we'll get you a choice of four games. Um, and we do a choice of four because it's a lot easier to do a digital download code for you than it is to do a physical disc so but uh yeah we'll we'll be in contact and we'll, we'll reach out to you actually and we'll get you a choice of games to select from all right but thanks to everybody who supports us on patreon and we'll do another giveaway middle of october and man there's gonna be some good games in october to choose from we're gonna have a tough time i think limiting it to four but uh but yeah, thank you. Congratulations, Piracy, and thank you to everyone who supports us through Patreon. We appreciate it so much. All right. Anything else, gentlemen, before we get out of here? Nah, go play some good games or great games. There's um, a lot to do. Um, football is is tomorrow, so that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, watching okay. some, some football. But there's some games that are interesting, and go enjoy. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and see you guys yeah. next week. I'm, I'm looking forward to fantasy football tomorrow, Steven. You can uh, you some fantasy football yeah. tomorrow, Steven. <laughs> Steven and I are playing each other this week, and our uh, we we put together a fantasy football league for our community. And thank you, you guys. We filled it up um, pretty quick, so thank you for that because we kind of put it together last minute, and you guys did a great job filling that up. So yeah, it's uh, that's a lot of fun. And, and don't forget, everybody, uh, we have our Madden franchise. Uh, we just actually had somebody message while we were doing the show asking if they can still sign up, and yes, you absolutely can. There are forms to fill out on both Facebook and Discord. And Facebook is the Gaming Hub Forums. I'll look us up there and join that community, please. Uh, if you go to Twitch, TXH Gaming Hub there, uh, make sure you hit follow. And from either of those places, you can get a link to our Discord page, Discord channel, and come in and take part in the conversation there. That's probably the most lively chat that we have in our community. Uh, a lot of people in there, and the conversation is pretty good. So, yeah. Uh, if you want to help support the show, a couple ways to do that. Twitch, which we're broadcasting the show on right now. And you can, uh, once you hit that follow button, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. Please use that on us. If not, use it on somebody. Help support somebody's community and help them grow. Otherwise, we have a Patreon uh, page. Patreon.com slash Gaming Hub. And for as little as $2 a month, you can get uh, exclusive content for patrons. And for as little as $5 a month, you can be entered in for a monthly giveaway of a full $60 game. And we're going to have, we're going to announce it in, what, th two weeks, guys? Maybe, maybe next week, maybe the week after. But we do holiday giveaways every single year. And we've got something really special planned for you this year. That's actually going to start early. <laughs> and oh, it's start in October. Oh, whoops, I released it. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to start in October. And we're really excited for uh, what it's going to be. We think it's really unique uh, to our show. Uh, we think it's something our community will really enjoy. And we'll be announcing that and officially beginning it in October. And I will tell you, we'll, we'll detail it as we go, but I'll tell you just as a teaser, it is by far the biggest giveaway prize we've ever had. Yeah, yeah. and it should be really fun for you guys to, yep. to participate in. So definitely be on the lookout. Yep. yep. And uh, speaking of our community, I want to give a shout out for people listening that uh, if they're a part of the Discord or Facebook, uh, let me know if you want to play NHL or if you look forward to joining our ESHL team. We're talking about ESHL, and we will have a team that you guys can join up. And uh, hopefully the community want to join in, play some games, and uh, get some Ws, get some wins. All right. Thanks, Grant, for clarifying that, because yeah. <laughs> we haven't done a lot of that. So I needed some... Yeah clarification but uh but I'm here. that's gonna do it everybody for episode number 122 and uh we thank you again for joining us really appreciate it we'll be back next week actually with episode number 124 we're gonna post a, a bonus episode that we did um that's a time patron exclusive kind of a fall preview of games and that'll be posted in the middle of the week as 123 and then we'll be back next weekend with 124 until then everybody for graham and steve and i'm tyler saying thank you so much for joining us have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next week. And uh, stay safe, play some great games. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Take care, everyone.